my guys, you won't believe it, but I decided to come back to Europe and right now I'm somewhere in Austria. No, this is Zhenxi province, city of Nanchan, China. So I'm, I'm gonna spin you around so you can see what is happening here. Uh, so as you understand, Chinese people can make not only fake phones or automobiles or just fake everything, they literally can fake the city. And this is not just one square, this is a city inside of the city, which looks just like this. So this is Nanchan city, Zhangzhou, no, Zhangzhou, Zhangzhou province, sorry, China. Let's check it out, what we can find here. Mm -hmm. So this is how this European little city <laughs> looks like. As you see, there is literally no one there. No people on the streets, no cars, all right, let's say almost nobody, because I still saw some people were living there, so yeah, here's a car. Uh, they're just residential buildings, so people live. But in the beginning, I think this place was created for, like, for Chinese people not to go abroad. Why do we need to go to Europe? We brought to Europe here in Nanchan. But of course, no one like wanted to <laughs> to stay here while it was po more possible and better to go straight to Europe. Well, before COVID, before 2020. If you look on the first floors of these buildings, you see some shops. Well, they used to be there. Right now, everything is closed. And actually, it's not the first time that I see something like this in China. Because, uh, for example, nearby Shanghai, there is another uh, town, Tamza town. It's completely the same thing, we, even with a uh, kind of same looking church. And the church is working. And every time when I was coming to such places, I was seeing ghost towns because it's not popular at all in the beginning maybe but later on people maybe realizing it's better to go to europe so it's not a good uh, idea for local market i guess what you can do here right now is to do your wedding photo shooting really i saw lots of people in uh, wedding dresses just having a photo shooting and then, yeah, I was walking and, as you see, crossing the six-line road in the middle of it. And it's fine. There is no one to say to me anything or no cars to hit me. But to be honest, it was the most decent European village I saw in China. Because before, all of them looked too fake to me. And here I already came to... Um, the most important sightseeing spot of the city, and to be honest, the only one, of the Pavilion of Prince Ten. It was built in uh, seventh century our time, and uh, but it was burned down like twenty nine times, and every time it was rebuilt again. So what we see, this tower and the nearby area. It's not the same as what Prince Tan used to see at his time. In the middle we see Yin Yang sign, on uh, both sides are red towers, I don't know what is the use of them. And then of course there is a river or a little lake, some pagodas and skyscrapers on the backstage. Very typical view of the city in China. Across the river there is a financial center, that's why there were more skyscrapers. I hear this is how the pagoda was looking inside. It had lots of bright red colors and green colors. All the six floors were looking like this. And then with some paintings on the walls, maybe representing the life and the history of uh, this Prince Ten. And here we even see the representation of their life by the wax um, models. How is it called? To be honest, the Prince Ten didn't have a big and interesting or, let's say, important history. But what is important about this province or the city is the porcelain. Since the ancient times, Danzi province used to be the biggest producer of porcelain. Here we can see his clothes. 
I don't know about this one. This one probably he used to wear during the battles. This one is his wife's because um, there are particular birds uh, which are representing uh, empresses. This one again, don't know. <laughs> this one for sure for some ritual because this bright yellow color is a color of a dragon and dragon is an emperor. Here was an installation how exactly this place was burned down 29 times. The view from the balcony. The city generally looked like grayish and some pastel colors, but generally very nice. Another very beautiful mosaic on the wall. And as in many places of such kind, you can buy this thing and write your fishes and hang them there. Under such a beautiful roof, really, I could stay there for maybe 15 minutes just looking at the roof. But of course, on a video, it doesn't show how beautiful it was. And the, from the roof, you could see another wooden crafting. Nearby that pagoda, there was a few little, very quiet yards. And if you see something like this in China, which looks like obviously a stage and there is a bit of um, water underneath and in front of it there is a square, it means it is a theater. Later on I went to the city center to walk on a Xiao Chujie. Of course every Chinese city has it. It's a little street with lots of different snacks sometimes very can be too weird and yeah i go there just to see the atmosphere watch people but i don't really buy this stuff for me this food is too oily and too spicy especially this province and nearby provinces are famous for eating spicy food Lots of people, it was very crowded and loud, of course. Some sweets. No one was wearing mask, which was so shocking for me after escaping Shanghai lockdown. Later, here I realized that it was another historical like castle, but I didn't get into it. And then there was this beautiful little pagoda. This is how the typical streets look like. And as you see all the people riding electric bikes and no one is wearing helmet, which was again surprising for me because in Shanghai or other big cities, you have to do that. Generally, the city was super quiet, nice, and oh yeah, this is how I was traveling inside the city. So in Shanghai, you can rent a bicycle, but here and in some other places where there are not such a big population, you can rent a scooter. You just scan the QR code, pay some RMB, and you're free to go. It was really very convenient to travel like this because even though the city considered not that big the distances can be very long this is already another side of the river the business and financial center so that's why here you see more skyscrapers the place basically looks more modern another kind of cars and buildings more shopping malls here you even can see how they put glass on a skyscraper Later on I saw this square and but what was more surprising for me is this rainbow road. Like first time I see something like this. This is the Eye of Nanchan, 160 meters high and it's considered to be the third uh, wheel in the world. Yeah, this side of the bunt is not that nice, it goes directly to a swamp and another side of the river from here we definitely see that that is an old part of the city, not much skyscrapers, but it's still pretty.
beautiful sunset and please look at these tall buildings it's just people live there and there was nothing around only buildings hundreds of them <laughs> and this is where i would like to end this video yeah sure you see i'm still in a european town it's just because it was more convenient for me to film here as well the ending video anyway i hope you like the video i hope you liked everything so give me some likes leave a comment subscribe and let's see where i'm going next so see you in the next video bye